in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, let the weak say, I am strong, and you may be seated. <clears throat> When we talk about the subject of, of weakness, I, my mind can't help but go way, way back and reminisce to my younger years to my, with my identical twin brother, Don. We had a lot of fun growing up together, but those French boys were skinny, scrawny, feeble little boys. And we were the epitome of weaklings. Just, just no meat on the bones, if you know what I mean. To be honest, though, we really didn't think anything about it back then. All of our friends were the same way. But then as we began to get a little older, our perspective began to change. As teenagers, well, you know, it was now time to start impressing all the girls that we were finally noticing that were all around us, right? So... That's when we got real concerned about this inadequate, insufficient, pathetic, shameful image that we were displaying. So we did what any self-respecting set of twin boys would do in this situation. And at the age of 14, we decided to go get a set of barbells and some weights and you know, start working out so we could put some muscles on our bones and some brawn on our skeleton, right? And I, I remember Pastor seeing an ad in the paper and and that's when we got so excited and we went and begged mom, mom, take us to Kmart so we can pick up that 110-pound set of red, white, and blue weights. Well, I say we picked them up. Actually, I think my mom had to carry the box out to the car <laughs> and in the house, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty pitiful. But things were about to change. What's the Bible say? Despise not the day of small beginnings. And in this instance of my twin brother and I, it's like, let the weak say, I am strong. So I'll never forget, a, I don't know, a year or two after we got the weights, one day I was at home working out. And for the first time, I bench pressed 143 pounds. I couldn't believe it. Man, I jumped up off the bench. I ran through the house and found my mom and said, Mom, you got to come see this. <laughs> uh, you know how moms can be. No, darling, don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself, sweetie. You know, on and on. But no, I had to make my mom proud that, that her son could do this thing. So, so what happened? Well, I, I plopped down on the bench and I confidently lifted that barbell with all the weights on it and lowered them down to my chest. And, and, and then, and, and then... Um, yeah, you guessed it. I, I try as hard as I could. There's no way I could lift those weights back up where they were supposed to be. I was stuck. I wasn't stuck up, but well, that was the problem. The weights weren't stuck up where they needed to be. Oh, never mind. <clears throat> and mom was the only person in the house right then besides me. Oh man. So she had to help me roll that barbell down with all 143 pounds painfully down my body and onto the floor. Wow. All I can say is I'm so glad none of my friends were there that day. The rest of the story is that, that the weightlifting my brother and I committed to, it really worked. I mean, I know you can't tell it now, but give me a break. I'm 60 years old. <laughs> But we stuck with it, and we, we both became a lot stronger in our efforts. In fact, my twin brother, Don, he even fared a lot better than me. He ended up with 15 and a half arms, jogged about five miles every other day, which was pretty good for his 155-pound frame that he had at the time. All right, well, I haven't come here just to talk about weightlifting or about what physical condition that you're in today, although that might not be a bad idea. I do, however, want us to consider this topic of spiritual weakness. What shape are you in right now? Just what kind of things cause spiritual weakness in our lives? 
And for some of us, what seems to be past failures in our lives can weaken our resolve. Turn to your neighbor and say, past failures. Sorry to go back to it, but speaking of past failure, uh, that infamous day at the house when mom had to rescue my, her, her boy, that, that was pretty embarrassing. I mean, it was pretty bad. But I was so determined and so convinced to become stronger and, and leave the days of weakness in my past that I didn't allow that momentary time of weakness to stop me from doing what I knew was making me stronger. Now, some of you here, we're all here in Southern California. You've heard of a guy named Walt, um, Walt Disney. Yeah, well, you've heard of him. Did you know that a boss fired him one time because he didn't have any good ideas? But that didn't stop him. I'm here to tell somebody whose mind and whose spirit has recently been vexed and plagued with what seems to be past failures. Let the weak say, I am strong. This scripture needs to become your motto. Your past does not have to define your future. And here's why you can believe that. Psalms 37, 39 through 40. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked. And save them. Why? Because they trust in him. <laughs> And then let's talk about the hangout versus the workout mentality. Yeah, everybody say hangout versus workout. Which one are you? <laughs> if we're on the wrong side of that, we're going to be kind of weak. You ever known someone that fits into this category? Philip is a relative of my wife's family. <laughs> her family, who, who, who uh, fits in this category. I mean, he religiously goes to the, to the Stearns Gym on Grenada Avenue in San Diego, which opened way back in 1946. And uh, their slogan is, it's a place where you can train in the footsteps of bodybuilding greats like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, you can tell that's where I've been spending all my time. Not. Philip loves to hang out with everybody there. He's known as a regular, but not in the way you would think. He doesn't work out with anybody. All he does is hang out with everybody. And occasionally gets on one of those stationary bikes. That's about it. Folks, I got news for you. Hanging out with strong people, it's a nice idea, but it doesn't make you strong. That's the problem with some of us spiritually. We are deceived into thinking that we're okay. I'm just fine the way that I am. Yeah, you may think you're strong, but the Bible talks about this when it says, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. But don't get me wrong, I'm not against hanging out with people that are stronger than you, than you but, but unless that motivates you to do something different or, or influences your life's choices towards actions that make you stronger, I'm not so sure how much good it's doing just to hang around. Does that sound right? I thought it did. The Apostle Paul had it right, though. Paul didn't have a hangout mentality. His mindset was more like, I'll work it out. His life wasn't perfect. He experienced what he called a thorn in the flesh. Now, I'm pretty sure whatever this thorn in the flesh was, and we're not sure what it was, but he had days that he just didn't feel 100%. It was cramping his style. It was setting him back. It was 
distracting him from accomplishing all that he felt called to do. And we get a glimpse of this in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 through 10. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, in other words, three times, that this might depart from me. And God said unto him, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Huh. So it started out with Paul begging God, please take this away from me. This, how can this be your will? And then God responds, hey, my grace is sufficient for you. I, my, my, you know, my strength is made evident in your weakness. Well, I, I think that gave Paul a, a revelation. And uh, <laughs> kind of changed his tune. And, and he continues on in the scripture to say, well, in that case, most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. And I add, let the weak say, I am Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 2, verses 3 through 6, And I was with you in weakness and in much fear and in much trembling. And my speech, my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Folks, you got to know that not every day is, of, of your life is going to be a camp meeting experience, stepping on the clouds of victory from cloud to cloud. Some of you right now are facing some things like Paul faced where you just don't feel strong at all. You're even wondering, can I face another day? Can I get beyond th th this thing, this, this trial, this, this mistake? Can, can, can I rise above what has happened to me today or last week or last month or last year? To, to you, God has sent me to you to tell you, let the weak say, I am strong. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 8, trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil, and it shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. That sounds like strength to me. Let the weak say, I am strong. And while Paul provides us with a proper perspective of, of how to deal with weakness in our life, if you would allow me to draw some sobering parallels from the life of Samson. Thank you. I was going to anyway. Who is known as the strong man in the Bible. We've heard it from growing up in Sunday school, all the stories. We find the story of Samson unfolding when he was born with a Nazarite vow on his life from birth. And in the 13th chapter of Judges, and the angel of the Lord actually came to his parents and, and let them know that Samson was going to be greatly used of God to help deliver them out of the Philistines, their oppressor. And this was proven to be the case as there were Numerous times and instances where God's hand was mightily upon Samson. And he accomplished great feats throughout, throughout his time against the Philistines. God even blessed Samson to serve as a judge for 20 years over Israel. But now go with me to Judges chapter 15. Where Samson had just finished slaying 1,000 men with the jawbone of a donkey. Wow. Wow. What a victory. However, 
Watch this. Immediately following this great victory, in verse 18, we find that he became very, very thirsty, like Brother French does when he preaches. <laughs> I don't feel bad, Samson. I'm in, I'm in your boat. <laughs> So much so that he had to call on the Lord, saying, watch this, Thou hast given me this great deliverance into the hand of thy ser- at the hand of thy servant, and thou shalt I die for thirst and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. Did you forget about me, God? Hello? This <laughs> kind of reminds me of my weightlifting days. You would think that after someone has spent hours working out, that that would be the worst time to pick a fight with them, right? All oh, those rippling muscles. I mean, try to think of me as a teenager. I, 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 did, I had some, you know. <laughs> and you would think, oh, man, he looks buff. I ain't messing with him. Uh, let me let you in on a little secret. That's actually the best time to pick a fight. That's when somebody is most at risk. I remember days after working out. I couldn't even reach around to scratch my back. My arms were so muscle-bound from, I know you're laughing because you, no, there's no way that was you, Brother Francis. Okay, go ahead and laugh. But I remember that. Brother Chico here, he he can tell you about all that. (laughs) I'm not going to compare my teenage years to, to him. That would be stupid. (laughs) here's what I want you to realize and understand right here Samson was abruptly made to realize even on the heels of such a great victory slaying 1,000 men he found himself immediately in a state of weakness and a need to cry out to God In much the same way, it is an unsuspecting experience in our lives as Christians that that we could even think that, that we would find ourselves in a weakened condition after a great spiritual victory. You just wouldn't think that that's possible. However, this can happen after a time of revival or even when if you've been used by God in, in a very special way, This it actually can be a moment that the virtue has gone out of you and and find yourselves vulnerable. And what I'm trying to say to you is, even after great spiritual victory, the enemy knows that you can be susceptible at that time. Folks, there is never a time to let down your spiritual guard. Let the weak say, I am strong. And after all that Samson had accomplished for God and for Israel, We find he started going down a wrong path when he believed he could flirt with temptation in his life. And it wouldn't hurt him. He felt like he was a Teflon Christian, I think. Well, it wasn't Christian back then because Christ wasn't there. You know what I mean. And uh, we, we see this being carried out when he went into a harlot in Gaza. And it wasn't long afterward he fell in love with Delilah in the valley of Sorek. And, and it was there in the lap of Delilah that he slowly gave away the secrets of his power. This, my friend, is how sin gains a stronghold on your life. Oh, I feel like Samson. God, I need water. It starts, friend, with a glance, just a hint, a sniff, a, a nudge, just, just, just a look, a thought, a leaning towards. By the way, it's noteworthy that Samson changed his outer appearance before he lost his inner power. And without any regard to the Nazarite vow he had on his life or the secret of his strength, He flirted with sin too many times, which took his strength from him. He trusted too much in his own strength. And when Samson fell asleep on the lap of Delilah, 
That, my friend, turned out to be another turning point towards weakness in the life of Samson. I don't know what got into his head. How could it be that he could not sense that he was losing his grip? Did he get weary and well-doing? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I, I can't figure it out. I know it didn't happen overnight. It was here a little, then, then, then there a little, and then, and then finally he gave in and, and told Delilah. The secret to his strength was tied to his vow of his uncut hair. Then all of all things for him to do, he decided to take a nap, lay his head in the lap of Delilah and go to sleep. And while he was sleeping, they shaved off his hair and robbed Samson of his strength. In Judges 16 and verse 20, Samson was deceived into thinking everything was okay. I'm fine and dandy, Randy. And he awoke out of his sleep in verse 20 of Judges 16 and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And, and he did not know that the Lord was departed from him. And now he finds himself powerless to fight off the enemy any longer. It wasn't the same as it used to be. You might remember what happened next. They put out his eyes. They bound him up. And they forced him to grind in the prison house like an animal. Listen closely. Spiritual slumber is another parallel of, of Samson's life to our lives that, that can cause us to be weak. When you intentionally take yourself out of the fight and you seat yourself on the sidelines for whatever reason, when you fold your arms to sit this one out and you close your eyes to shut the world out around you, you become spiritually drowsy, leading to a spiritual state of comatose and not able to discern what is right and what's wrong and what you should be doing. You know, I'll never forget one night years ago, I, I woke up in the middle of the night and I realized my arm was gone. That was weird. I know I had my arm attached when I went to sleep, it was, but now it's gone. And, <laughs> I know, it was kind of funny. Then I realized I did have my arm. It just, I fell asleep on it wrong and it was totally numb. It was like it was just paralyzed. I couldn't move it. I, I couldn't do anything with it. That was scary. And this can be the result. When you fall asleep on the job in your Christian life, you become lethargic, you become dazed, you become desensitized and unable to rise to the occasion or meet the need of the hour. You don't even realize there's a need there. God, help us to wake up out of our sleepiness. Let the weak say, I am strong. 2 Chronicles 15 and verse 7, Be ye strong, therefore, let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. I'm preaching a word of warning to someone in the house today. Please don't mistake or dismiss the sin in your life as just some small thing. Find the, the strength of character to give sin the eviction notice that it deserves. Let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. It, it's true that the Philistines blinded Samson and they made a sport out of him for a long time. But there came a day when his hair began to grow back. They didn't notice it. And he had had enough of their taunts and their bullying because he had a moment of weakness. And then it so happened that about 3,000 men and women had gathered to celebrate the captivity of Samson. They brought him in the midst of them so they could make fun of him all over again. <laughs> Look what happened to you. You're in our captivity now. You little weakling, you. You couldn't kill a flea if you wanted to. Whatever they were saying to him, I don't know. 
Did they have fleas back then? <laughs> After they had had their fill of making fun of him, he had a little lad guide him over to the pillars that was holding up the house where they were all at. Vined on a bat. Son, take my hands, would you? Place them on the pillars on, on both sides of me. And the little boy does what he's asked to do. And there he just wants one more victory. We find in Judges 16, 28, Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. I pray thee only this once, O oh God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. God honored that prayer. You know the rest of the story as he pushed with all the might that he had within him and a little more because God empowered him again. And there 3,000 people were killed. What's it got to do with me, brother friends? Maybe you're here and you can relate to Samson. Maybe you're feeling like you're down on the canvas of life. And in this state, you're dazed. You're unable to think clearly but rest assured, friend, there is hope for you today. Today is the day of your salvation. You have your trainers and your coaches. You got your pastor and pastoral staff that are caring for you and are telling you to get up one more time for one more round, for one more fight. You've got all of heaven and the saints on the sidelines screaming, don't give up. Let the weak say, I am strong. Don't stay down. Don't stay coward in your corner. Hallelujah. It's time to regain your spiritual consciousness. Time to regain your spiritual equilibrium. And here's where you understand your weakness. Yeah, you're sure weak. That's fine. It's okay to recognize your weakness because it's not your strength that's going to win this battle. Herein lies the Christian strength. We recognize our strength and we find, we recognize our weakness and we find strength. It's here in this place that we can say, I am strong. This is where a second wind of Pentecost is going to blow in your sweaty face and propel you to a new victory. Why? Because the victory is already won through Jesus Christ. You can feel like David when he said, I could run through a troop and jump over a wall. Musicians are coming. Like an old song says, I've got power that you can't see. God is living inside of me. I can face any enemy because God and I make a majority. Right. Ephesians 6.10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. There's a song entitled, I'll Be Up Again. Love this song. Down on the bottom, all friends are gone. Down on the bottom, I can't go on. Enemies surrounding me laughing at my calamity, telling me that there's no way to reach up to the light of day. But I'll be up again. Just you wait and see. Rough times won't keep me down. They'll just send me to my knees. And there while I'm in prayer, God will give the victory song. I'll be up again where I belong. Falling on my knees in prayer, I recognize that the battle's already been won through Jesus Christ. Through the blood that he has shed, the enemy has already fled. And with new strength within my soul, I shall arise and meet my goal. Everybody stand to your feet right now, would you please, quickly. You're going to be well on your road to recovery when you admit that you're weak. Kind of like the al alcoholics, AAA, Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. Time to confess your weakness. Are you ready? We're all going to do this together. All right, I want you to repeat after me. Hi, my name is, and then your name. Good dude, good dog. Hi. 
I am a weakling. <sighs> Feeling better? <laughs> Quit punching each other. I'm not talking about that. But that's not where we're going to stop. See how alcoholics, they, they admit that they're an alcoholic, but they stop talking right there, it seems like. But we're going to go on. I want you to say, I am weak, but I am strong. All right, now let me ask you a question. How are you going to say this? Are, are you going to say, I am strong? Is that how you're going to do it? Or, or, or are you going to say, I'm strong by, I'm strong? Like you're really ashamed to be saying it? Come on, everybody, take ownership of it. Say it like you mean it. Say it from the heart. Say it from your gut. Let the weak say. It's time for somebody to come to this altar right now and make some noise. Amen. Drown out the voice of the enemy who's been lying into your ears. Come on, somebody. Claim your strength. I am strong in my faith. I'm strong in my commitment to Christ. I'm strong in my commitment to my church. I'm strong in my worship. I will not remain in this weakened state of mind. I will climb out of my depression. I'll climb out of my anxiety. I understand I can't do this by myself. But I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. These altars are open. In Jesus' name. Come get your strength. It's time to proclaim it today. God bless you.